What's up, everybody? It's the Digital World Podcast. And boy, oh boy, these Ripple partnerships are something else. And I want to start off this video. We have a good video for you today with um, showing this, what Ripple posted about the top 50 disruptor companies. And it's interesting because... Uh, we see here that it seems like the Rising Phoenix is the logo for this. So these companies that are disrupting the norm and are changing things as we know it and ripples in that top 50. I believe they're listed as number 38. So I thought that was interesting. Very, very interesting that they have this as their logo. Um, not that Ripple posted it, but I believe this is an article from CNBC. And that's why I think it's very, very interesting. Now, moving on, we have Ripple to deliver first real-time payments from Oman to India using blockchain. Now, we know, I mean, this this, this is, it might be like some other news, you know, that you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, they would do that. But if you think about it, look at all these banking partnerships that they have. They've been working uh, with banks for a long time, that 40, 50 or plus partnerships with central banks and we know that Michelle Bond and Monica Long were in a video uh, discussing how you know they're they're not consumer facing by any means their main target is the uh, institutions hedge funds uh, banks and so this is just showing you that it's always been about CBDCs I believe and the narrative for CBDCs is increasing at a rapid pace. And we see, moving on here, that Brazil announces digital currency guidelines. The plans to launch the digital re real, which is their currency, are part of the central bank's modernization agenda for the country's payments industry. So Brazil is ready. We see here that Ripple official launches operations in Brazil. We knew about that. Old news. But... Um, now we see here, June 8, 2020, Ripple and Central Banks of Brazil hold private meetings. So we know about this. We're hearing about it. What happened inside? We don't exactly know. But I think it's related to uh, running on the ledger and creating a CBDC. And we know that there's a private ledger for central banks. So whatever was discussed, it could have been about them running, you know, transactions on a private ledger and it's interesting to see all this and you know there's this narrative that the u.s is behind that china's ahead and and that all these countries are all ahead with legislation and i think that it's not about the u.s being behind i think it's a narrative that's been happening around us and the u.s has been letting all these people get a get ahead of us because if the u.s were to lead and start all this before all these other nations, it would leave them in the dust. And it seems like it's a coordinated plan to get everyone on the same page so that they can all move forward together in this new digital age of using CBDCs. And I think once the U.S. announces legislation and laws that would create a regulatory sandbox around these digital assets, then it's, it's full go-ahead. And, you know, whoever is not in is left behind. But I don't think they want to leave anyone behind. And that's my opinion, but that's what it seems like. I think the U.S. is waiting for all these nations to catch up and be ready. And then once that is done, they'll go ahead and introduce the legislation necessary. And it'll happen really fast. So CBDCs are definitely on their way. Now... This is an interview here on CNBC. Listen to the guy here, Jack the Ripple says he's talking indirectly about XRP. So he's talking about the solution in this video. He's talking about the solution to what the issues are with proof of work, which you've heard of many people talking about on their channels about uh, the energy consumption, the inefficiency, uh, how much it costs. It's not scalable. So go ahead and listen to what he has to say. Do you think it's going to be Bitcoin or Ethereum or Bitcoin and Ethereum? How does it ultimately play out? You know, that's a, that's a tough question. 
Uh, you know, I think uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum will survive. But if you let's go back to the uh, internet bubble, you know, AOL was the absolute winner. Uh, and nobody questioned that they were the leader. Um, Yahoo was the winner. Um, and so then Google came along and uh, other P- other players came along. And so uh, I think what we're going to find out is there's going to be some new crypto that comes along. Uh, which can overcome some of the issues that we're facing right now with the cost of mining, you know, all the carbon production uh, and issues like that. And it'll be a superior form of crypto. And I think that will become the dominant crypto. Do you think it's going to be Bitcoin? You have it. He says another one's going to come along. It's going to solve the issues. It's going to be superior to that. And we know what that is. We talk about it all the time here. And I believe that, XRP is 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 one that's gonna help do that, and I there's other useful digital assets out there, um, but in terms of solving the the issue of cross border payments, um, essentially lubricating the financial system, and helping solve the frictions that exist, this would be the one to do it, the chosen one, and. Next, we have the interview with Brad Garlinghouse on CNBC. And listen to what he has to say about uh, Ripple and the cross-border payments, which essentially is lubricating the financial system like we I just mentioned. The 2021 edition of the Disruptor 50, these are private of the company that's coming in at number 38 on uh, this year's list. Ripple, the company uses blockchain to send money across borders for financial institutions, and it uses the token XRP to do it. Join us now, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple. Brad, great to see you. Great to have you on today. Um, Let's start just generally about about the the crypto arena and and what we've seen, because there's an article today, Brad, uh, about, uh, I guess it's harkening back to the colonial situation, uh, pipeline and ransomware, et cetera. And the thrust is that we just need to ban crypto and and <laughs> it and it's set forth here's all the reasons i think about everything that you've set up with with blockchain and and defi and 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 how this uh, can really effectively replace a lot of existing systems like swift or whatever and, and it really works well do you think that i mean what do you make of, of someone that makes that case given all the blockchain infrastructure and everything else not just around bitcoin but do you think that this toothpaste ever goes back in the tube like that because you can use it for ransomware? Not sure I've heard the toothpaste analogy before. I'm going to steal that one myself. Look, first of all, thank you for having me. I think the question you're asking is a really important one. And I think it gets to the kind of core of sometimes just a misunderstanding about how these technologies can be applied in a way that actually is really good for businesses, for citizens, for, for just the community at large. And so when we talk about, like, should we ban something, let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. The way Ripple uses these technologies, as you introduced, is we can make cross-border payments, which are slow and expensive today. We can make them real-time, very efficient, very low cost, and that's good for the global economy. We can unlock trillions of dollars of kind of trapped capital to make the economy more efficient. And so blockchain technologies can be applied in a lot of really constructive ways that's reducing friction, whether that be transaction cost, transaction speed. But again, for Ripple, that's around payments. But, you know, I think to say, hey, let's just ban all this. Yes, the, the toothpaste might already be out. Uh, and I don't know how you get it back in. The 2020- okay, so we see exactly at the end. He said cross-border payments are slow and expensive. We need to make them efficient, low cost, and it will be good for the global economy. And that's basically the gist of everything that Ripple is trying to do. They're trying to lubricate the system. They're trying to be uh, the oil um, of of the system. And I think there's uh, I I definitely think that this SEC case is because it, it it slowed down the price action of XRP the token. Because I do believe that it was going up in price and that definitely dropped it. And it's maybe all the players are not ready. All the people that need to be involved are not um, quite ready yet. And I I definitely think it's important in DAI's channel. I think it's um, 
a great idea or opinion of his that all these bankers and all these other entities are not ready yet. They're not ready to custody these digital assets. But once they're ready, you're going to see this um, quick push to legislate around digital assets. And so it's going to be worth uh, keeping an eye out. And I think, I honestly do think that the U.S. is not behind. They're the leader in this. But they're waiting for all these smaller countries, all these other surrounding nations to legislate um, before them. Once they're a go, they, as soon as that happens, the U.S. will be uh, ready to go. And it's going to be full steam ahead. So keep your eyes open, your ears open, and we'll keep you updated on what comes next. But CBDCs are coming. And I think this is a huge part of it. I hope this episode has brought you some value. Like and subscribe. Comment below. What are your thoughts? I like hearing from you. This is Digital World Podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode.